Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Schmidt mini lesson number two. So I'm going to be uh, talking to you about gas behaviors. We've been working on uh, gas behaviors in class, kind of along with our states of matter. Um, I want to give your attention to what we're kind of going to be working on here. And I have two flasks, two different sizes. I also have two water balloons inside that are two different sizes. This one's a little bigger because I had a little bigger hole here, and this one's a little smaller because the hole's smaller. But uh, what I want to challenge you to think is, how was I able to get this water balloon inside? It's not able to come out this way, and even if I was able to get a hold of the end of the water balloon, which is next to impossible to do, I would not be able to pull it out. Okay, it does not fit. I can't even get a hold of it. Okay, it won't fit through the hole. All right, so you're probably like, how did he get it to go in there? Well, it has a huge relation to gas behaviors that we've been talking about. I want, I challenge you to uh, pause the video right now and just kind of uh, predict how did I get these balloons in here. And I will go on uh, on showing you and actually demonstrating how I got it in here um, once you've taken some time to think about it. Hey, I hope you paused the video. Now I'm gonna show you how I got the flask to go inside or how I got the balloon to go inside of the flask. I don't want to have uh, too much water here, so I'm going to get this cleaned up. Who would have known it was wet? Because we're dealing with water balloons. All right, we're going to deal with a flask that's this size, about medium sized. And uh, this is going to be my water balloon. My water balloon will not fit through here. I'd have to push it, it really, really hard, and it would end up breaking on me. All right, what I need is a heat source. Okay, I will be lighting this piece of paper on fire, putting it inside of the flask. And what will happen is I'll actually create a vacuum. And the flame needs what to survive? Oxygen. And once I get the flame inside of the flask and I put the balloon on top, I will cut its oxygen supply off. Once all the oxygen has been burned up inside of the flask, I create a low pressure system inside high pressure system outside. High pressure always wants to go to low pressure. The high pressure on the outside of the flask should push the balloon inside and we'll have some magic or science as I like to refer to it as. If all goes well, if I can get my flame to work here, get a little bit of fire. Okay, once I, once I know I have a pretty good burn, Drop it. And that's how we do it, baby. Boom goes the dynamite. You know what's really cool is it worked the best when I was recording it. It took me forever to do those other two. However, just like I told you, we had a high pressure system outside, low pressure system on the inside. The balloon got pushed in from all the high pressure. The gas wanted to go in to where they wanted to occupy the space. The particles wanted to occupy the free space inside. Balloon get out of the way because gas is coming through. This is what we're going to uh, kind of have a little assignment on now. I'm going to bring your attention over here to these two pop bottles. Okay, Here I have a before action, a balloon that has been uh, put on the top with a, uh, an after. And what I did was I blew the balloon up and as soon as I had it blown up, surprise, just kidding, okay? Um, I, had, I had to have holes in the bottom in order for the air to get pushed out. If I tried to blow this up, I can't do it because there's nowhere for the air to go. So I can't create a high enough pressure system in this balloon to push this other air out of the way. So what I had was some holes here on the bottom which I covered with clay and that allowed me to push the air out, covered the holes up, voila, the balloon stays blown up. This is what I want you to do. You're going to draw me a picture of a before and after situation. This is the bottle with the balloon before it was blown up, and here is an after, all right? 
well, I don't want you to color in your balloon like I colored in the balloon. Okay, I want you to draw the microscopic particles of gas both inside and outside of the balloons. I want to see what you know. What is the gas behavior like in this situation compared to this situation? Explain why the balloon doesn't deflate based on your pictures. As always, ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope that you uh, use this opportunity to learn more about science and uh, any uh, returning students or students from last year as I've gotten a few visits. It's great that you still want to check up and uh, learn a little something while you're at it. See you on YouTube.